folks, this might be the baddest chipping and molson setup I've ever seen, so stick around. Got a good one for you today. Gonna be looking at the Splitfire 4003 chipper. This thing is an absolute beast, all right? And so this is a PTO powered unit. We're gonna probably try it out on various tractors and we're kind of putting it, well, starting out in the, well, probably the worst case scenario because this is the bottom end of its horsepower range that it's designed to work on. It works on 20 to 80 horsepower, which is a huge range. I mean, that tells you about the, the strength of this whole setup here. It weighs about 600 pounds. Now, if you're not familiar with Split Fire, I'd encourage you to check them out. You know, and actually, they've got a really good video. Kyle takes you on a whole shop tour up there, but if you want to know how a product is made, where it's made, what goes into it, they've got just great videos there, but a whole shop tour, all the machines. I mean, they've invested just, I don't even know how, Boku Bucks to do everything right there. It's really incredible. A group of 20 guys, I think it's 20 plus employees they have now up there too making these things. So, and they're not, you know, some, some companies spread themselves thin doing a little bit of everything and they really have a core focus, not all that many products, just building them as well as they possibly can. And so we're, we're gonna get into all the features and, and uh, some demo and everything too, but there's a couple things I, I thought were amusing in a, in a good way, and it's humorous though. So um, on the inside here, we'll show you, there's a, a laser cut plate that says there's a max diameter of three and a half inches. But if you go to their website, it says it'll, it'll cut a max diameter of four inches. And so I reached out to, to Kyle just to get some clarification on that. And this is one of the amusing things I thought was the fact that they put that three and a half inch, the smaller width on there because they sell so many of these things to rental yards, which then are getting used by so many different operators that they wanted to give themselves a little bit more of a margin for error because, you know, if you rent it, you're gonna drive it like you stole it, so to speak. And so you're gonna jam whatever you can in there. So they felt like downsizing that max diameter on there a little bit would give them that leeway. But the fact that they put this plate on all of them that they sell because it's so prevalent to sell them to rental yards, which take an absolute beating, to me is a sign of, well, the, the reputation, I guess, in the industry all over the place, and not just the US, but up in Canada and worldwide, they ship these things all over. So I took that as a really good sign. And so the other one, I'm gonna, I'm gonna see if I can find it. I was reading through the manual. I do that sometimes. I do read manuals on occasion. Oh, well, we do have, uh, we got these shear bolts or shear pins there too, and uh, something for an electrical shut off, but there was something really, oh, really amusing. Let me find that. Yeah, <laughs> this is kind of a, um, well, it, it's a, I don't know. I, I don't know how, I, well, you guys can decide for yourselves, but I'm just gonna read this to you and let me know what you think. In the manual, it says, it is not uncommon for split fire products to be stolen due to their value and ease of mobility. Always store your machine in a secure area. I, I think that's, that's the first time I've ever read that, <laughs> right in the manual that uh, that they'll say you know make sure you, you store it in a secure facility because it's not uncommon for split fire because they're so well thought of and highly regarded to be stolen so I, I thought that 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 gave me a chuckle when I read that I wanted to share that with you okay so now oftentimes we do show assembly of this stuff as well but um, honestly there wasn't much to this it was really easy came in on a skid now this chute just bolts on okay you just have or not bolts on, this should say clamps on right here. So just tip, pull it like this, take it right back off. There's just one on the other side too, and it'll literally just come right off. Um, but we're gonna leave it on. Uh, the uh, the hopper here was already in place. Uh, we The PTO shaft literally just slides on. You know how you would connect it on, on the tractor side, does the same thing on the gearbox side. Uh, filled it with gear oil. You just pop the little side plug out, fill it through the top with 80, 80 90, and wait till it starts seeping out, and then you've got enough in there. Grease it up. Oh, and then I did get an optional, I got this trailer mover on the back side. we did bolt that on. But I mean, literally there was just, it wasn't worth showing, it was so easy. It was a, just a piece of cake to do. The ball was not included, I did add my own two inch ball just to uh, connect with the Ultratec trailer there and, and haul that along. So also, okay, pay attention, this is gonna be something when you when you place your order with Split Fire 2, they're gonna ask you, they're gonna walk you through it, how you want it set up. Um, and now you can change this yourself, but you can change the angle of the hopper, you can change the angle, or the position, I guess I should say, of the, the exhaust or the discharge chute too. So you can have it facing the side if you want, you can have it facing the other side, you can have it facing back. You have different options, you can do it on your own, but if you know you want it set up a certain way out of the factory, let them know, they'll get it out to you the right way. And so we moved that trailer out of the way there, but I wanna show you, it really is a piece of cake and you can just pop this thing right off. So if you are going a ways down some 
crazy trails or whatever else. You don't want to damage that when you have a, um, a trailer hooked up on there. You just pop the thing off, you can throw it in your trailer, hook it back up and you're done. But this is, you know, same thing for as far as the assembly goes to, it's, it's that easy. Okay, just line up the bottom one and the top one. There we go. Boom. You're ready to go. Now, one thing I did not set up, and we're not going to today, uh, but this does have an emergency stop on it, and you can wire this into your to your tractor somewhere in the electrical system into the, I think it's maybe the seat safety switch. I honestly haven't looked into it that closely, uh, but it is an option It comes standard with it right here too. Of course, you're gonna see this is quick hitch compatible. So we're using a Speco category one quick hitch on here, but I know it's category two compatible. I think the website says category three compatible as well, uh, rated for 20 to 80 horsepower again, which is gigantic. Now I wanna explain a really big difference between uh, this chipper here versus like the Wallen, uh, the Wallenstein and maybe, well, actually quite a few others that are on the market out there. A lot of them are gonna be direct drive. So basically you're coming right off the PTO shaft, you got it right here, the output and everything coming straight through, and then it's going right into a rotor plate, and that rotor plate is, is up and down this way. And so it's gonna be spinning this direction here, and there's still gravity feed. So the difference with split fire is the fact that it takes that incoming power from the PTO, gonna put it into a gearbox, which then goes down below. It's got an output shaft that comes right down here. You're gonna have some pulleys underneath that are gonna change the gearing ratio, change the speed, increase that, and then also make this a horizontal rotor. You're gonna have a lot more speed for chipping capacity, and it's also gonna naturally work a lot better to have, in a gravity feed situation, your debris sliding down on a horizontal plate versus gravity feed trying to slide down into the bottom edge of a vertical plate or a vertical rotor. So you are gonna have two blades that are on the rotor. You can resharpen both those blades. They are reversible as well. And then it's also gonna come standard with two extra rotor blades too, along with a rotor stop when you need to change your belts. So this is gonna be our first time using this. Gonna have a little feel for it, how, how, to, how to operate it, what, what works best. Um, I did watch Kyle's videos that he did. He did them on, um, I think it was a BX2370, so another small horsepower tractor and then he also did it on a, a John Deere 5 series tractor I think around 50 horsepower or something like that um, you know big difference in what you can do I know with chippers you want to listen to well you can listen to the chipper itself and, and the kind of the strain and the engine strain and all that too and kind of let that guide you on how how quick to infeed it um, if you're going to do wider diameter stuff maybe cut that into smaller sections if you can but i know in the videos that kyle did he was kind of going for it too and he was throwing some large stuff in there so we're going to have some fun with it today see how it goes oh and i do want to point out that we don't sell these at goodworks tractors you know we're doing advertising i've wanted to work with split fire for a long time we were able to link up and and kind of make a deal where i could get some of these products in, demo them out, show what they're all about. But in turn, you're gonna go right to Splitfire's website and that's where you're gonna place your order. They're gonna know exactly what you need. So give them a call, whether you're looking for a chipper, if you're looking for a splitter, you want your carry-all, you want all the above, whatever it is, they're gonna be more than happy to help you out and get you set up for your needs and your situation. But enough chit-chat, I'm ready to get to work.
Just take five seconds, hit pause, hit the subscribe button right down below if you're enjoying this video. If you like it, thumbs up. If you don't, thumbs down, but give us one or the other. And leave a comment if you have something to add. Check out goodworkstractors.com for your tractor attachment needs. Now back to the video.
folks. So you are going to be able to see two different tractors in this video. First, we're going to start out here with the Summit Tractor, the TX25, 25 horsepower, well, around 18 or so horsepower at the PTO. A little bit later on, we're going to do the 2038 hour, 38 horsepower tractor. I think it's around 30 horsepower at the PTO. You'll see the differences there. And so this is the first time used, brand new, off the crate, just set up, raring to go. So a little bit of playing around with this, seeing what the best setup is. And uh, I got to laugh because, um, you know, the, the chute on the split fire here is open on the bottom side. And uh, there was a little bit of conversation between Chris, the cameraman, and I about, uh, well, how do we position this chute against the trailer? Is the, are the chips just going to fall out of there or not? And, and I think we quickly discovered that those, those chips are flying out of there. And it's like a jet stream of air, too, when there's <laughs> nothing flying out. It is, it is powerful, to say the least. So basically, we position the chute just wherever it makes sense to, to get everything into the cart there. Um, do reposition a little bit later on a couple other spots on a better angle and as we get more comfortable with it. So this little mini forest I have here has a lot of dead stuff that's uh, been on the ground and just looking to start cleaning that up. And we just took over this property and, and so it's just kind of chipping away at it, so to speak. But uh, you'll see some real dead stuff, some sort of dead stuff, some new dead falls that have just come down to. And, and really the chip size on this is, is really incredible, very versatile. And we've got a lot of trails that we're going to repurpose this at. And, and who knows, maybe use it as some gardens, some, some beds and everything else in the future too. But uh, we'll have a lot of projects down the road. And so hopefully the audio picks up on this, but you can you can sense when the machine starts to struggle on the really big stuff. And I'm not shy about trying to push things to the limits. And there was definitely quite a few pieces of, of uh, or trunk diameter size that were greater than the four inch material. Some of it was a little older and rotted, so that's fine. I mean, it's a little bit softer, but, and you can hear it strain. And at one point, one point we did stall it out all the way, but that was the only time. And um, not that you want to make that a recurring basis. If, if I was, um, playing by the rule book, the manual, so to speak, I would take those larger chunks and cut them into smaller sections because if you're letting it run continuously at those low RPMs, it's, it's just going to eventually just run out of steam and, and stall out. So if you have just smaller chunks when you're going towards that max size, four inch um, or bigger, <laughs> unofficially, um, you know, make your life easier on the tractor and, and on the chipper and everything else. Overall, though, very impressed with the performance on the TX25. Again, this is a very small end range, so it's the same horsepower engine size as like a subcompact would have, uh, like a like a 1025R, a Kubota uh, BX2680, that kind of thing too. So same same realm, a John Deere 2025, LX2610. They're all kind of generally in that very low end, that bottom end of the spectrum. We'll have to do another video in the future too, uh, hooking this up to the big Kubota M4. That's a 71 horsepower tractor, gonna be near the top end of the spectrum for this. And um, boy, you know, I, <laughs> I think whatever we could fit in there, we could probably uh, find a way to chip that up without any issues. Okay, so we switched things up, hooked it up to the 2038R. You can see it's a, it's a John Deere iMatch. Had to throw some bushings on there to get this to be compatible. But again, Spico iMatch, it's gonna work with either one of those and hooks right up just fine. Um, hauled everything back into the woods and, and dumped things out with the Ultratech trailer. That worked uh, just like it always does. Um, very, very nice. We had a, a storm this summer at some point, knocked over a, a tree. Um, gosh, what was it, a cherry tree? Was that a cherry tree? I don't know, it was a tree and it was alive. Um, so a little bit more of a challenge for it on the 2030R here, uh, hack that up. Some of the stuff I probably should have turned into, into firewood, but I wanted to see what this bad boy could do here. And, and so we chipped it all up anyway. Well, we might've lost the audio. The audio was, was uh, it went out at some point. I don't know if we have the audio on this or not, unfortunately, but uh, I, I didn't hear it straining at all. It just kind of powered through everything it seemed to. Um, so, I mean, that's the difference between 38 horsepower at the engine and 25, you know, and then their um, respective outputs at the PTO too. But again, this was a, a you know, a non-rotted tree uh, that just got knocked over this summer in a storm. And and we'll do a little side-by-side -side here of, of showing both the uh, the trailers dumped out too. And you can see the original one that had kind of that deader, drier, older material in it, and the new one that's got a lot of green uh, in it too, just just showing, you know, the, the moisture content and, and how fresh that material was as well. I got to say though, I'm really impressed. This thing is a lot of fun to use. It's, and it is, you know, Kyle had mentioned that I would notice a difference between the vertical plate and the, well, the vertical rotor and the horizontal rotor, and you really do. This is, this almost sucks the, the material down in there. I mean, on occasion, you just kind of, you know, just push it gently and it keeps on going, but 
It's got a huge oversized hopper as well, so you don't have to trim all your stuff very much. I mean, I, I didn't trim anything off. I just hacked it into certain lengths and then threw it in there and kind of jammed it in there. And it did, it kind of broke off naturally as it sucked it in. Um, completely different than that vertical rotor experience with the, with the wall and steam, which I'm not, I don't think that that was a bad uh, chipper, but this is just really next level. So really, I mean, to sum it up, if I had something um, I didn't like about this, I would, I would tell you. But honestly, if you look at the MSRPs, uh, Wallenstein versus Split Fire, this is going to be cheaper, and uh, it's, it's hard to beat. I know that there's some other competition out there too with hydraulic infeed and, and whatnot, and the more complicated you get, and you know, there's a lot of them out there that are made in China too, but this is made in Canada. Um, there's something that goes for that too. And, and again, check out that video on their shop tour. I mean, it, it makes it clear as day. <laughs> they talk about every Friday, they go through sweeping the floor, cleaning it up. They like things spick and span. It's just a very well-oiled machine that they have going on up there and very impressive. Well, and even really again, I mean, touching on this, this laser cut um, insert that they have on the inside of the chute, they even have a laser engraved plaque down here with, oh, they got all the, the torque settings on here for everything. They've got the pumps of grease every 50 hours. It's just a real classy touch. I think I gotta, I gotta try to up the game a little bit on, on my, um, on my products too, the Versa, the Versa bracket, the, uh, the stump bucket, all that stuff. This, this is, gives me something to strive for. Very impressive. And I think you guys will be impressed too. And so while I don't sell the split fire products, you get these directly from split fire. I do sell these trailers and all sorts of other tractor attachments. We ship all over the country every day of the week. So check out goodworkstractors.com. If you enjoyed today's video, we'd love to have you tag along. Hit that subscribe button right down below. Leave a comment, give us a thumbs up. We'd appreciate it. I want to thank you for taking time out of your day to stop by. And until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon.